In this video, I'm going to explain uh, nerve structure and how this can relate to explain uh, different types of nerve injury. Um, so first of all, if I start drawing a cross section of a peripheral nerve, it is surrounded by an epineurium. Within the epineurium, you have multiple bundles of nerve fibers and each bundle of nerve fiber is called a fascicle and these fascicles are surrounded by the perineurium. So as I said these are bundles of nerve fibers so if we take one nerve fiber this is surrounded by an endoneurium. And these, so, so if I take a, a single nerve fiber uh, in the middle you'll have an axon. So now if I draw a coronal slice through the nerve, uh, so say this is a, uh, a peripheral motor nerve and then you'll have your neuromuscular junction here supplying your skeletal muscle. Uh, if we take a coronal slice you'll find that it is myelinated with Schwann cells and in between the Schwann cells you have your nodes of Ronvier. And the function of the Schwann cells is that um, it increases the uh, velocity of, uh, of conduction of the, your action potential via a saltatory uh, conduction. And that's a buzzword for, for the exam. So again, if I draw the coronal slice and the, the layers that I've mentioned before on either side, so, so if, if this represents the, uh, the nerve fiber, uh, you have your Schwann cells, your nose are on the air, this represents the endoneurium, this represents the perineurium, and this represents the epineurium, and you have the same on the other side. Um, before I go on to nerve injuries, you, you may also uh, be asked to draw specific uh, peripheral nerves. And broadly speaking, there are two types. There are sensory and motor. So your motor peripheral nerves will have a large cell body and it will be, it'll have these little projections called uh, dendrites. So this is your motor, motor cell body. And these are normally located um, in the uh, anterior, uh, as the anterior horn cell uh, uh, from the central nervous system. So then you have your axon and these are myelinated with your Schwann cells like so. And then these will have multiple projections at the end supplying your skeletal muscle. Uh, and this is where you'll have your neuromuscular junctions. Your sensory nerves, uh, however, will have uh, your uh, primary sensory afferent fibers, again your axon, however your cell body is usually located in the middle uh, and usually at the dorsal root ganglion. And uh, on, on this side you'll have your, your receptors. So typically in the motor cell, your impulse travels this way from the cell down to the muscle. However, from, from this side, if these are your, um, your receptors or your sensory receptors, and uh, these are your afferents, your impulse typically travels this way. Um, so going back to the question of using this nerve, the, the understanding of nerve structure to explain uh, different classifications of nerve injury. I mean, largely speaking in the exam, you're probably expected to know uh, the Seddon and the Sunderland classification. Um, the, the, the Seddon classification uh, typically has uh, three, three parts to it. It's either a neuropraxia, an axonotomesis or a neurotomesis. And 
Uh, Sunderland, however, is a bit more involved and it has five parts to it. And it's either, so, so number one uh, is a neuropraxia. Number two, a Sunderland two, is axonal discontinuity. Sunderland three uh, involves the endoneurium. Sunderland four involves the perineurium. And Sunderland five involves the epineurium. And the reason I've written it down like this is because um, a Sunderland one would correspond to a sedan uh, neuropraxia, whereas a Sunderland 2, 3 and 4 would correspond to a sedan axontomesis, whereas a Sunderland 5, which involves the epineurium, is a sedan neurotomesis. And I use this coronal view of the peripheral nerve to explain these classifications. So a neuropraxia, which is a Sunderland 1, occurs here. Okay, so a neuropraxia. However, a Sunderland 2, where you have the axonal discontinuity, you, you get interruption of the axon and the myelin sheath. So that's number 2. Sunderland 3 would go across here. So across the endoneurium, the axon and the myelin sheath. Similarly, a 4 will go through the perineurium, and a five goes across the whole thing. So this is a simple way that you can explain to the examiner what these different types of nerve injury and where, where they occur. In reality, um, this is not particularly uh, relevant clinically, and um, you, this may lead on to, well, what is a classification that is more relevant? And this is where you talk about the Birch and Bonnie classification where you have either simply a conduction block or a degenerative lesion. And your degenerative lesions are then divided into favorable or non-favorable lesions. So just to mention that um, your Sunderland two, three, four, and five, these are your degenerative lesions. And your uh, de degenerative lesions are your lesions which will cause Wallerian degeneration.